retain versus immediate mode. Now in the lesson on event loop, we saw how drawing and events were the two most important operations of any UI toolkit. In this lesson, we'll focus a little more on the drawing side. First, let's just do some terminology correction over here. Instead of calling it drawing, let's call it rendering, which is the act of drawing something onto the screen. And this includes drawing 2D and 3D graphics. 2D graphics could include like drawing lines and strokes and filling shapes, and even typography where you can have text on the screen. So all of this come under the purview of rendering. Now, one of the most important responsibilities of a UI toolkit is to give you a way to do this rendering. And it turns out there are only two possible ways in which you can do it. One is called the retain mode, and the other is the immediate mode. So let's see what these are in turn. Let's look at the retain mode first. Now the UI that you see on the screen is always a 2D bitmap. But internally, these UIs are actually composed of a set of layers that have been flattened together. Think of them as all of these getting pressed together to create the flat bitmap. In a retain mode approach, you make this a little more explicit by creating a hierarchy of these components. Internally in the memory, you represent this particular hierarchy with an object model. It is also normally referred to as a component tree or a scene graph in case of 3D UIs. But the idea here is that you have a object model in memory that represents the state of the UI at any point in time. Now, the fact that we have an object model is also reflected in the API for the retain mode graphics. It is very common to see an object-oriented API to create these retain mode graphics. Now, let's say I want to create an orange box inside the gray box. The way I would do it is by creating an instance of a new box class, setting its background, and adding it as a child of the gray box. With these calls, it updates the object model by adding the orange box. And then the UI toolkit comes in and translates this object model into a set of drawing commands that results in the graphics that you see on the screen. Having an object-oriented and an object model-based approach to creating your graphics makes the retain mode very data-driven and declarative in nature. And rather than concerning yourself with the mechanics of how things should be drawn on the screen, you focus more on creating a high-level structure that internally is translated by the UI toolkit. So you focus more on the what you want to get done rather than how it should be done. The retain mode approach definitely raises the level of abstraction for creating graphics. But sometimes that may not be good enough for creating really large scale high volume graphics like this map that you see over here. The object model for this would be gigantic and probably eat up a ton of memory and even cause performance issues. This is most certainly not the way to create your graphics. Turns out there is a better way to do this. And the answer is immediate mode. Now, instead of dealing with your UI as a hierarchy of object models, you instead consider of having only one drawing context or a bitmap. And you do all of your drawing inside of that with an imperative looking API like this. You create a context and then you set your fill style, stroke style, and then fill and stroke rectangles. And you build up your graphics using commands like this. And this definitely looks very imperative in nature. The UI toolkit takes these commands and draws it out on the bitmap in the exact same order that you specify. Normally, this should be done back to front because you only have one canvas on which you're painting. And like a painter who draws on a single canvas, this is also called the painter's algorithm. Now, one thing you can glean from this approach is that in immediate mode, the memory usage is far lower. In fact, it's just the size of the bitmap and some housekeeping. So you can use this to create high volume, large set of graphics without worrying about overflowing your memory. Now the retain and immediate modes of rendering have become so popular that most systems actually offer both. A typical graphic stack in any system will actually offer both retain and immediate mode APIs for creating graphics on the screen. And in fact, these two things can live together in the same window. Some part of the window could be rendered with the retain mode API and some parts with an immediate mode, depending on your needs. So now that we have seen the retain and immediate mode separately, let's do a head-on comparison for both. Now the retain mode is characterized by the fact that you have a high-level abstraction for dealing with graphics. The API is normally object-oriented in nature and also feels very declarative. On the other hand, the immediate mode APIs are much more low-level. It reminds you of using traditional C-style APIs where you have to imperatively build up the graphics that you want to render on the screen. Because of the conveniences in a retain mode API, it's a de facto API provided by most UI technologies and platforms of today. 
Immediate mode APIs are perfect when you're dealing with high performance graphics. But when you have a large set of graphics that you want to render onto the screen without worrying about overflowing your memory. This is an area where the retain mode API can fall short due to the large object trees that are created, resulting in high memory usage. Notwithstanding that, retain mode APIs are allowed by all, and in fact, most powerful and popular platforms of today use this technique. Some of the striking examples include the HTML DOM, SVG, UIKit, AppKit, and so on. For immediate mode, the Canvas API is the best example for the web platform. Similarly, for gaming engines, you would see OpenGL or Metal in case of macOS. Skia is a 2D graphics library which is being used by most browsers of today. And similarly, Direct2D in Windows is also an immediate mode API. So in short, when you need the convenience and the high-level abstraction, prefer the retain mode API. And when you need the performance, nothing beats the immediate mode.